For today, I'd like to tell you about social aspects of undernutrition in fishery-based livelihood. My case study is an ethnographic field work based on sociology and anthropology. I'm a nutritionist, but I shifted my focus from nutrition science to social science because I realized the importance of social aspect. So in current understanding on gender and nutrition, studies are often focused on gender characteristics in isolation from gender relations. They often compare women and men in terms of incomes, expenditure, or gender roles in agriculture and domestic work. And also by gaining power, they say that women lack something compared to men. Then we have certain expected pathways among agriculture, women, and nutrition. So if we assume that if we provide capital, technologies, and market opportunities to women, then perhaps women's incomes, knowledge, and autonomy will be increased that lead greater outcomes in nutrition. But I question this idea. I think it depends on the social context. There are several empirical studies that show that women's increased income are, in fact, used by their husband, or domestic violence increased, or women suffer, suffer from double burdens and which lower nutrition performance. So instead of looking at gender characteristics, I look at gender relations based on Connell. She is a well-known sociologist who looks at gender relations and masculinities. Cornell says that we, our, our behavior is always gendered. One reason for this is masculinities. And masculinities are created by everyday practice in homes, ritual events, farming activities, schools, and local bars. Everywhere in the space, each space and places which, sorry, which create particular gender emotion or economic processes, discourse, and culture, which is deep in our mind, in, inside of ourselves, which create, which justify men's power over women on the large scale in the world. But Cornell says what is important here is that it is not economic status which justify men's domination over women, but everyday practice. So, Cornell says that it is changeable because women have agency and everyday routine practices are always changing. So based on this concept, I did my ethnographic field studies in coastal Kenya. I stayed in this house, in homestay. <laughs> And I selected eight women and eight men from different households. And I data are collected through observation, life history, and in-depth interviews. In the fishing communities in the coastal Kenya, people depend on palm wine production and small-scale fisheries. Men have primary access to resources, while women are engage in fish trading or palm wine, selling palm wines. And men go fishing by swimming, and they don't want to use boats. I think it is also associated with their masculinities. <laughs> and there is a sizable plantation there, but Mijiken, the local people, are not interested in capitalist economy and the commercialization of their activities. 
they highly value their local product of palm wine and fisheries. So when their livelihoods are viewed through the aspect of gender instead of economics, there are some very interesting findings. So women often or sometimes don't have capital to buy fish from fishermen. So they f fishermen and palm wine tappers offer their fish on credit. And they sell to the same fishermen and or tappers in the local bars. That's that they pay for it and the women return cash to them. This is their system. And that cash is again used for drinking. <laughs> <laughs> but the benefit of processing and selling are controlled by women and spent to children. And I think this this system enhances masculinities, and men are very proud of their control of resources and contributing to the community through drinking, not, <laughs> not through the household of their wife. They don't much contribute to household, but contributing to the community as a whole. <laughs> However, on the other hand, fishing and tapping are seasonal. Sometimes they lack cash because of the seasonal availability, but they need to drink every day <laughs> to enhance masculinities. So what's happened is that women, there are several wealthy women, women provide cash for fishermen, and they sell fish and wine on credit. By the time they can get fish or palm wine, they return their product and they keep drinking. So cash is again flowing very well. This system, but through the, this system, some women benefit a lot from particular fishermen or fish, uh, male tappers because they appreciate their offer of cash. And when they have lots of cash, they, they give women just cash over food, or sometimes they provide work job opportunities. So women uh, benefit, benefited a lot by such kind of system. And this is a kind of safety net uh, for maintaining food security. And in fact, resources are controlled by men, but they depend on women. This is the reason why women don't consume their fish by themselves or children. And men is consuming that fish by themselves. Because women, I think perhaps women think that it's better, they benefit more if they sell fish rather than consuming by themselves. This is a, a kind of safety net and food security. And in terms of gender relations within household, Women are not a homogeneous group. There are so many dynamics within, our, within the same community. For example, there is a woman in my, within my respondent. She is a widow, but she has seven sons. She, she, her bargaining power is so strong <laughs> because of sons, and she doesn't engage in fish sailing much because she can get, get some money from seven sons. Another woman is a divorcee with a wealthy male partner. She is very rich and she provides cash to other fishermen because she has a wealthy partner. And she even earns 30 US dollars per day from fish sailing because she has enough capital to do so, but not her own activity, but through a wealthy male partner. There is a single mother living with her mother and 10 siblings. She, uh, she enjoys her autonomy in, within her household because she doesn't have a mother-in-law, father-in-law, or brother-in-law. <laughs> Her nurturing and cooking activities are supported by her mother 
and her daughters and younger sisters. There is a young married woman without son. She suffers a lot. She doesn't have bargaining power because they assume that she doesn't play a role as a wife or as a mother because she doesn't have a son. So their relations and gender positions are diverse. So what is the source of women's bargaining power within a household? Is it cash? I think it is more about reproductive roles in this context, and also their capacity to manage housework. If they cannot manage, then people will see that she doesn't play her role as a woman. And also, seniority, power in seniority affects a lot in relation to gender. So younger women are particularly vulnerable in terms of nutrition as well, because of gender and seniority. So cash may be important source of bargaining power, but not necessarily from economic activities. If they have sons, or male partners, or a good husband, it is okay for them. So about men's masculinities and fatherhood, in the context of Kenya, coastal Kenya and many parts of Africa, men exercise their masculinities by institutional power, by inheritance rules of land. They control their land and they benefit a lot from bride wealth of their daughters. This was a source of bargaining power, which also affects early marriage and devaluing education or early pregnancy. However, since they are spending a lot on drinking these days and they don't have much land because of their migrant, immigrant, immigrant from hinterland. So they don't have institutional power. So what is their masculinity? Is cash. If they cannot earn enough cash, what they do is they look for alternative masculinities, which is violence, or girlfriends, or drinking, which doesn't help, doesn't contribute to nutrition and health of women and children. So my key message is, key message are, we have to go beyond for gender, uh, looking at gender characteristics to gender relations. And women are not a homogeneous group. Also, we have to look at why, uh, instead of what women lack, to why they do so, so that we, we can enrich our understandings on nutrition and gender. And we have to be aware that gendered behaviors influence women's everyday practices. It's not about technical or knowledge issues that can change behaviors, but their behaviors are always affected by gender relations and power relations. I think it is important to incorporate men into agriculture and nutrition, even their roles are not direct. So I, I want to invite more sociologists and, and anthropologists into this the study of nutrition, because if we do conduct more qualitative studies, we can have more nuanced understandings on gender and nutrition. Also, we can develop appropriate approaches which is context specific. I think it's okay. okay thank you very much.